welcome back in this lecture we will look at the current distribution that is observed in galvanic corrosion and in sacrificial anode protection or corrosion protection via sacrificial anode so this is a follow up lecture so you should have first heard the previous lecture wherein we discuss mixed potential so when we want to understand zinc iron galvanic coupling the first thing you need to understand are aspects of thermodynamics the aspects of thermodynamics involves establishing the mixed potential um that was mentioned in elaborated in the previous lecture under this title please listen to that lecture before continuing further so we are trying to model this system and when we try to solve the relevant macroscopic electrochemical equations we represent this system um uh, via this system this is uh, a way to model the system so what is uh, seen here is you have a smaller segment of zinc compared to smaller compared to iron that is typically the case um uh, because the area of the anode that is getting corroded is much less than um the more noble material so here this element is represented as zinc and this um uh, more noble metal is represented as iron and then what we are seeing here is the potential distribution in the electrolyte this structure indicates um the electrolyte and the other aspects field lines and the interpretation of field lines is similar to what you've seen in electrostatics from your high school so this is an insulator so there cannot be any current that is getting through the insulator therefore there cannot be gradient in potentials okay so when you go in this direction there is no gradient therefore there cannot be any current in this region and this region and typically when there is larger gradient we say that uh there is greater current right so first let us look at um uh, how did we end up with these potential uh lines potential distribution in the electrolyte so we have looked at how to model such a system so typically we address these kinds of material subject material in discussing current distribution in electrochemical systems so in this case we neglect concentration gradient because that is not too significant in this uh, case in this um, system and what you end up is that you end up solving only the laplace equation that is let's just step back there are three processes transport processes one is convection convection is absent another is diffusion um that depends upon concentration gradient and when there is no significant concentration gradient that term can also be dropped then you end up with just migratory flux and then you solve the laplace equation this kind of current distribution is called secondary current distribution if all this is not clear please look at this uh lecture in the same playlist this elaborates the procedure and the reasons why we have primary current distribution secondary current distribution and tertiary current distribution so what you do is that uh to go about modeling the system we assume that the zinc iron galvanic couple is under a single uh metal potential we always indicate this with 51 because of significant electronic conductivity between zinc and iron you state that that is under the same potential that is the uh metal potential is 51 and you indicate or denote the 
potential at, in the electrolyte with the symbol phi 2. This is what we are trying to obtain. What are the necessary uh, conditions to obtain this potential? So the mathematically, the what we enforce is the boundary condition at the electrode electrolyte interface. Um, this gives rise to a uh, further equation, which is the Laplace equation, which when solved gives you the potential distribution. The for the ion electrode, the condition is that along the y direction in this direction, the ionic current, which is specified by this term, that is the conductivity of the electrolyte times the potential gradient in the electrolyte, which is the ionic current, is balanced by the electronic current at the um, electrode-electrolyte interface. So there are three components to the electronic current, the oxidation of ion, reduction of oxygen, and hydrogen evolution. There are two uh, reductive components and there is one oxidative component. So this is the flux boundary condition at the electrode electrolyte interface that matches the current in the uh, coming from the electrolytic side. Similar condition can be enforced with zinc electrode too. So for this part, you have oxidation of zinc and there are two reduction reaction, oxygen reduction reaction, um, and hydrogen evolution reaction. So what is the functional form of uh, these equations? These are typically uh, represented via Tafel equations. And what is to be noticed is that while there cannot be um, mass transfer limitation for a hydrogen evolution reaction, because water is always present here, oxygen uh, evolution Oxygen reduction reaction can be uh, under mass transport limitation. These have to be incorporated to uh, model this system. Once you get um, to solve these equations, you can, the result of uh, that modeling procedure, mathematical modeling procedure, is the potential distribution in the electrolyte. How, what does the potential distribution indicate? you would intuitively anticipate the current at the interface between zinc and iron is very large compared to uh, current at all other places, right? So that is what is being uh, shown here. Um, each of these lines is there's like a contour plot. Each of this line indicates a particular potential. So the gradient of potential is much more in this region. And therefore, uh, the current is also ex will be much larger at this interface. As opposed to this, as you move away from this interface, uh, for example, in this region, the gradient is much lesser. And therefore, you would anticipate the current is going to be lesser. Because the uh, area of the zinc electrode is much less than the area of um, iron, the current density in the zinc electrode is uh, much larger than the current density in the iron electrode. So please go through lectures on current distribution to understand this mathematical modeling procedure. What we are illustrating here is just the potential distribution and how to interpret uh, the potential distribution to obtain the current in the zinc electrode and the current in the iron electrode. Moving further, what is shown here is the average dissolution rate under different condition. On the y-axis, we first uh, plot the rate of dissolution, and there are three scenar uh, scenarios. First, in the first scenario, let's focus on this condition. You don't have any galvanic coupling. What you observe is that iron corrosion, that is the rate of corrosion of iron, uh, which is indicated by this uh, bar, is much higher than the... Um, a rate of dissolution of zinc. This is because 
Um, iron is the surface of iron is a better electrocatalyst for the uh, relevant reaction uh, for um, iron corrosion, especially in terms of reduction. Iron is a better catalyst, uh, electrocatalyst compared to zinc. Because of these reasons, uh, the corrosion of iron is much more um, than zinc when there is no coupling. When there is galvanic coupling, when you have established a galvanic coupling, we specified what we meant by galvanic coupling in the previous lecture. And what you observe is that the central conclusion is that the iron corrosion is almost completely suppressed. Okay, So it goes from this value to this value. But what is, uh, uh, as opposed to this suppression, the zinc corrosion is enhanced significantly. Okay, um, And what is the difference between this bar and this bar? What we are varying is you are varying the conductivity of the electrolyte. So what you see is that when you go from higher conductivity of the electrolyte to a lower conductivity, the overall um, uh, current comes down, the rate of dissolution also comes down because there is a significant potential drop on the electrolyte. Therefore, the corrosion process uh, comes down significantly. So from uh, the rate of dissolution in this case with greater electrolytic conductivity, the rate of dissolution is significantly uh, decreased. So you go from uncoupled state to a state of galvanic coupling. So here the main conclusion is uh, iron corrosion is suppressed at the cost of zinc corrosion. When you go from more conductive to less conductive uh, electrolyte, uh, the rate of dissolution is decreased. For the, moving on further, we are what we are presenting here is the current density in the y-axis. And along the x-axis, um, you have the position coordinate. So what we see is that in conjunction with the potential distribution, uh, the current at the interface is much higher than the current at positions away from the interface. As you go closer to the interface, the oxidative current of zinc increases exponentially. And the cathodic current uh, in iron is increases. Uh, the negative sign indicates cathodic current. The positive sign indicates anodic current. So this current goes down. And this current increases. That is one conclusion. And the other conclusion is we have compared two different electrolytes, one having greater conductivity and another having lesser conductivity. What is seen is that when you have lesser conductive electrolyte, the magnitude of the anodic current also decreases. Uh, that is the other conclusion. Then there is a third conclusion which um, we looked at when we looked at electroplating, electrodeposition as a function of Wagner number. Wagner number is the ratio of charge transfer resistance to ohmic resistance. So you can connect the uniformity or decrease in uniformity to uh, the discussion we had during electrodeposition lectures. So what we see is that when the conductivity is decreased, the ohmic resistance is increased. Therefore, the current distribution becomes more non-uniform in that scenario. Compared to this scenario, the current distribution with a lower electrolyte with lower conductivity, this current distribution is more non-uniform. Uh, 
this kind of analysis was made in electro deposition. So please look at that for a better understanding of this particular point. In the next lecture, we will move to a new topic that is to do with anodic protection. Thank you.